some doodles. Jade on back to answer more goddamn questions. First, we got two order questions. God damn it. Knock those out real quick. Yeah, this first one's from David Burdett. Hey, J-Dog, two questions for the channel. What is your favorite black thrash band, and who has the best slash craziest live show? My son and I watch your channel all the time. Good shit. Um, I mean, favorite black thrash band? I mean, a lot of the stuff, I just, just put it as black model, to be honest, but I, I, I like the band Flame. It just did what to do with those two records, uh, at least with the first two albums. That's all I know, which is the March in the Firelands, and uh, I forget the other name. Then there's the band Urn. Uh, it's been a while since I listened to the other band, either one of those bands. But I remember those being like, yeah, just, just I, mean, I guess you consult in Black Thrash. Um, stuff like, I mean, if you're to consider Beast of Mockery Black Thrash, which I, I just consider as a black metal band, um, then I would like Beast of Mockery more. Yeah, let's just go with those so nobody ever brings them up. Earn and Flame, let's say. And then uh, Craziest Live Show. Um, I don't know what crap. I hate that word crazy because, like, what, 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 what define crazy. Um, like, what's your definition of crazy? Like, the crowd, the band, like, and, and, and what's crazy? Like, the energy or the guy took a fucking shit on stage? Like, what do you define as crazy? Um, I could say this. Entertaining-wise, the first time I saw Exhumed, in 2000, it was either 2000, 2001. That was uh, definitely one of the best, craziest shows I've ever seen. Um, Bud Burke puking on stage, the fucking blood, the chainsaws, the goddamn fire spitting. Um, that was definitely one of the goddamn best shows I've ever seen. So, that's a little like that one. Yeah, this is kind of a, a little bit of a long one, a little long winded. I think he emailed me this actually, but he did place an order. Uh, Eli Martinez. Uh, question for J-Dog's channel. Hey, J-Dog. I check out your channel periodically, and I dig the content I've seen thus far. You should have watched that backlog, goddammit. I used to be a fan of Goat Lord. They were a Las Vegas doom death band that broke up a while ago. Yep, I'm fully well aware of who they are. Until I found out that their guitarist, Joe Franklin, was the admin administrator of a snuff website and killed an eight-year-old boy and his mother before turning the gun on himself and committing suicide. I didn't even know about the eight-year-old boy part, to be honest with you. I heard about the uh, killing his mom and himself. I heard about that years after I fucking heard about Goat Lord. My first introduction to Goat Lord was, uh, was it Displeased Records or the affiliate label with Displeased Records? They did that triple LP. What is it called? Distorted uh, something. Still have it to this day. That's what I, that's what I own and listen to. Uh, distorted birth demos or something like that. It was, a, it was a triple LP. I have the LP. And then there was a double CD. It was pretty much, I don't know about everything they were done, but it was all their, all their demos and shit. That was my first introduction when that was a new release. And then, fuck, that was probably, uh, maybe 2003 or something like that, 2004, somewhere around there. That was my first introduction to Goat Lord. And then, you know, fast forward another 10 years or so, Band labels like Nuclear Now and shit were putting out their stuff too. I like the, uh, the demos and he did an LP, he did a few different uh, LPs. Um, but at finding out about the murder shit, out, it's probably about 10 years ago or so I found out about it. It's probably about 10 years after I heard of Goat Lord. I heard and kind of like, oh, really? You know that. And just I just left it at that, to be honest with you. I didn't know about the eight year old boy thing though, so that's news to me. I used to volunteer as a guardian and, and lit Tim. Uh, advocate that represents abused, abandoned, and neglected children in court and the community. And Joe's action struck, stuck in my, in my crawl to the point I couldn't enjoy Goat Lord's music anymore. I'm all for free speech, no matter how blasphemous, gory, or racist it may be. But actions are something else. You can say whatever you want, however you can't do whatever you want. When Joe made the decision to administer administ admin for a snuff website. And kill an eight-year-old boy along with his mother. He crossed my shit line. <laughs> my question is: Have you ever experienced something similar with a band you like slash liked? And what are your thoughts on the matter? Members of bands who go beyond make believe to commit to actually commit vile acts. I don't mean to get all heavy on you, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. Best of luck on the channel later on, Eli Martinez. Um, I'm kind of like, yeah. I mean, obviously, I think that that makes the guy a pos, no doubt about it. But I don't judge the music based on that because, honestly, at the end of the day, if I met every single band I listened to and got to know the people on the very, not just meet them and, like, shake their hand, talk them for 10 minutes. Let's say I got to know them, know them. 
for years on end. Every single one of them, every member. I bet you 80% of them I probably wouldn't even like. Uh, so if I was going by that, I wouldn't like the music. So I separate the music from the personal. Uh, it's Because that's like saying to me, like, if you found out something really scummy that Arnold Schwarzenegger did, do I all of a sudden stop liking his movies? I said, well, I didn't like the movies because I liked the, the person, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't even know the guy. I never met him. He might be the biggest dick in the fucking world. Who knows? I liked him because I liked his movies. So what he does and shit like that, I don't know that. Just, you know, he should be held fully accountable for whatever he does. But, um, no, I mean, it doesn't take away the music for me. I just I just don't pay attention. And to be honest with you, most of the personal stuff, I just don't follow. I just never cared. Um, yeah, well, a lot of these guys do. I just I kind of just don't really care what they do, you know what I mean, as far as who they are. I just don't, I just don't pay attention, good, bad, or, or neutral. I just... You know, I never had a Facebook, a MySpace, none of it. I never, I just, I just don't pay attention to those things. I just, yeah. Uh, unless I got to know those my personal level and became friends, then, then that. But outside that, I just automatically assume there's a good chance I probably wouldn't like them. Um, and if to think about it, how many uh, guys are fucking scumbags behind closed doors that you just haven't heard about, but you like the music? I can guarantee you there's some. So that's the way I look at it. I just look at this as a piece of art. Just remove the name from it. Uh that's kind of how I am, to be honest with you. So, uh, no, and I didn't even know the whole story. Again, I heard about it and just kind of, oh, well, I, I probably forgot about it five minutes later, to be honest with you. Just didn't really pay attention. So, anyways, next video line, got any questions? A flat rim hat, screams pack of Newport smokes in the pocket, and limp biscuit and corn in the CD player. Yep, 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 sure fucking does. Uh, Todd Marmoziskis. Scott from Repulsion interview, question mark, would be fun. Yeah, of course it would be. Obviously, I would absolutely get Scott if he's fucking in the same room or as me or anything like that. Or I'm, I'm at a show and he's at. Of course, I'm going to try to get him. There was no question. If he's there, I'm going to try to get him. But he's not exactly always around me. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I mean, all these comeback shows and stuff. Has Repulsion ever played Cleveland? To my knowledge, they haven't. And if they did, I didn't know about it because I wasn't at it. The only time I kind of seen Repulsion, I saw briefly a couple songs, was at MBF and... 2015, 16 from a far distance. Um, that was the only time. So, but, you know, going to these fast and shit coming up, if I can get Scott, I absolutely yeah, would love to. No doubt about it. Distributor call points. Any devils dig the rarely mentioned Russian band Merlin? Never even heard of them. Uh, Wicked Devil. Hey, King Devil, Lord of a Thousand Cool T-Shirts. Just watched Ryudu's stream today. He's in the Finnish band Nightside. He's up for a stream with you and him. Yeah, so I've been told. Anyways, when Hell signs a band, does Hell pay for the studio costs when a band makes an album? Thanks, bro. Case-by-case -case basis. Um, someone like, for example, uh, I'm not going to mention it. If you're a more established band, more popular, well, yeah, the deal goes up. You know what I'm saying? Um if it's some new band, they're on their first album. Hey, you want to sign us? We don't pay for anything. It's, we'll put it out, and we'll give you, generally speaking, 15 to 20% of the uh, press, whatever we press. So, for example, let's say we sign a brand new band. They're on the first album. Let's say we do, just for simple numbers, let's say we do 1,000 LPs and 1,000 CDs, right? 15 to 20%. Let's just say 15%. We send them 150 CDs, and we send them 150 LPs. That's the deal. If they start blowing up and shit like that, the deal goes up and they want money on top of copies, then that can be negotiated. But at that point, when the things go up, it's because they're moving more than 1,000 CDs, 1,000 LPs. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> I'll tell you right now, Campbell Corpse isn't getting 1,000. <laughs> they ain't getting 15% of copies uh, putting their stuff on. Why? It's because they sell. That's the way it goes, you know? When you're, um, you know, when you bring in the sales, you can get the band more. It's the way it, it's the way it goes. So it's, just, so it's different for every band, is to answer your question. And that Ryota guy, oh uh, yeah, tell him to contact me. He doesn't email me. Somebody brought it up. Uh, send him my way. Service at hellsatbakers.com. I have no idea what his contact is. Um, so yeah, if he's down the stream, tell him to email me. And if he doesn't email me, then I'm just going to uh, assume that he doesn't want to do it, which is whatever. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely up for doing it. Andrew Gabriel, do you like Makatazo by chance? Sure do, Brad Ross, especially the first two goddamn records. If so, do you know the drummer, vocalist, new band, Leprophiliac? I've heard of it, but I never listened to it. 
Those two bands are banger as a motherfucker. Yep, yep, yep. And we put out, uh, we worked with Sign, uh, I mean, um, Octazo on a couple projects. We did the uh, Cyanide Makatazo split 7 inch. It's that circular cover. Shit, that was years ago. I don't remember what year, maybe 08 or some shit like that. It was a while ago, that's for goddamn sure. Um, yeah, but my, my favorite album is the first album for sure. Carne, whatever the hell it is, uh, how to pronounce it. It's all the shit in Spanish. So. Aaron R. Hey, J. Dog, question. Mortation came to San Antonio yesterday, but to my dismay, Will was not there. Oh, I heard about that. Um, yeah, I emailed Will a couple weeks ago, asked him uh, how he's doing. Uh, I, I get the vibe that he didn't want to talk about it or probably was sick about talking about it, which I don't blame him. Uh, he just said, I'm doing good, man. Um, I'll see you in the, uh, see you in Cleveland. You know what I mean? Because I'll be going to Cleveland here in September. Um, but I guess he was rushed to the hospital. So, uh, yeah, I heard about that. Uh, yeah, I would have been bummed. I mean, it was just Roger and uh, what's-his-face on drums at Sam. And uh, who they have filled? Did they have somebody fill in for some shit? Um, yeah, I would have been bummed. But, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't think that was his intentions. From my understanding, you guys rushed your hospital. That's the story I heard. Brotherhood of Steel, question for Justin. Are you going to answer the questions on L Neck Crown's interview with you like you promised? I put in a pretty good question on that video. I think you would be interested in. Let's go look it up right fucking now. Little Ned Crumb video. Did I did I say that? I'll answer the questions on there. Maybe I didn't know. Uh, I saw it got over 2K views, so I was happy to see that. You guys actually went over and checked it out, so that's good. 2.3K views one month ago, it says. Uh, 66 comments. We can knock these out. Let's see what the fuck there is. There's questions. Uh, people saying great interviews. Kick ass. Boom, boom, boom. Kick ass. Uh, here we go. Uh, is that who asked that? Was that Brotherhood of Steel? Uh, here's Brotherhood of Steel question. I see a couple question marks in there. Question for Justin: What do you think of metal boomers such as Eddie Trunk, who consider themselves to be authority figures on metal simply because of their age? Didn't I answer this? And the fact that they lived and experienced the '80s but have some of the most poser takes. Yeah, I've answered this. Um, it's probably on a video that already went up. Um, I don't even know who Eddie Trunk is, but yeah, he sounds like a fucking douche. If you, if they, it, it, again, if Eddie watches, that motherfucker call me. I don't know you. I never heard of you. I don't know what you look like. I don't know what your voice sounds like. This is the first time I heard your name. Well, it's maybe seconds. I think, I think I already read this question. Um, but if he thinks the most underground fucking thing is what is he see, Metallica and Testament and whatever the hell this guy's saying, his words not mine. Then, then yeah, canoe is a mofo. What's the question marks on here? So, okay, I got a question. Robert G, uh, 305. I got a question. Which early 90s sweetest death metal albums reign supreme? Left Hand Path, Lake and Ever Flowing Stream, Into the Grave, Nothing But Death Remains, Where No Life Dwells, Why don't you just mention all, blah, blah, The Red, Red of the Sky is Ours. Which sweetest death metal album from the early 90s was the greatest? I mean, it's all personal preference. Uh, most people are going to say left, uh, left Hand Path, which makes sense. It was the first one as far as with the, the buzzsaw guitar and shit like that. My personal favorite is uh, Lake and Ever Flowing Stream. But um, Left Hand Path is right behind it. So it was like Dark Recollections and shit. Like all, all of them, you know what I mean? So, but uh, most people are going to, I think, are going to say Left Hand Path. My personal favorite is Like an Ever Flowing Stream. And I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. Billy Killer, what... What hip hop act does the, does this dog character inhibit? I know what you're fucking talking about, bro, bro. That was all the questions. So did I did I answer the guy that asked? So uh, there you go. Any more goddamn questions on my video that I was left off on? Uh, Corey Raposa. Hey, J Dog. How about tolling thirteen now from Mortuary Drake? That's from two thousand. Probably their best. Very unique, unique and well executed black metal. I'm trying to think if I even listened to that one. I never heard anything by Mortuary Drake that sucks. I mean, the fav my my favorite thing is the first record. That, um, the, the only problem, even with the first record, is there's too much dicking around shit. When it's when the music's going, it's good. But there's just a lot of you know. There's more dicking around than people people rip on the tish. 
for goddamn too many intros, right? I think there's more dicking around on Mortar and Drake uh, as far as just, I guess, spooky intros and shit, just the non-metal parts. I mean, I know we're wrong. I don't mind a little bit of that stuff, but it's it's just there's a, there's a lot of dicking around. That's all I got to say. But the actual music, yeah, it's good. And I never heard anything about it. I saw it sucked. I don't even know if I specifically listened to that one, but I have listened to a couple later ones. Uh, werewolf. Hey, Joe, and it's spelled where W E H R Wolf. So it's spelled a little funky. Hey, Justin, very amusing job with your videos, man. I've been HHR supporter since I moved to the States 15 years ago. It's what I like to hear, bro, bro. Yep, 45-year-old Italian here. Question, will you guys start accepting, again, prepaid gift cards as a payment option to place the order? Cheers, brother. Keep up the... Um, I, that's a chase question. I'm not sure. Um, I, I I think... I don't even think... It's a chase question, but I don't think it's left up to him. It's our, whatever our site administrator. I don't know why... If it used to, that it doesn't anymore. Um, yeah, Chase does a lot of shit with the site administrator. So, yeah, sorry about that. I don't really have an answer. But I don't see why not. I don't see why it wouldn't take him. Especially, especially if you're saying it used to. Reed Jensen. Blueprints is my favorite deceased album. Shit, probably one of my favorite albums, period. About fucking time to hear a good goddamn opinion on this channel that's outside the goddamn just completely fucking obvious shit. Emma Chan Shudder. Back in the day, there was a rumor that Korn was supposed to do a cover of God of Emptiness. Really, Robert Angel? I might have mentioned this on a past video. I don't think it ever officially happened. I did read somewhere that some members dug carcass. Who knows? I mean, the thing is, again, like when I attack these fucking canoe-ass bands, the guys themselves, for all I know, they could be cool. They could be, Maybe they like real shit. Um, you know, so from what I've heard, this was recently, too. I guess it was on his Facebook or something. The, I believe it was the singer uh, for the band Ramstein. I guess, don't call me on this, this is what I heard. Um, he's a, one of his favorite bands, or at least he's a big fan of, is the band Volcano. Or the Brazilian band, I guess, Bloody Vengeance and all that shit he, like, he likes. Uh, supposedly, uh, he brought an LP or something recently for one of the guys to sign. I guess it was on his Facebook. Um, see, maybe it was a CD, LP, but he, that's the hire. Uh, uh, popped in my mind, I was like, he had Bloody Vengeance LP, he's getting it signed. I was like, do you even think he would know who that fucking band is? So, to some of these guys' credit, if they come up with something really trendy... Let's say they're, they're, they play an instrument, right? They like music. And let's just say their mindset is, let's say, let's say, let's say somebody like, uh, let's say King Folly, right? We kind of know he likes just old school shit. Is it outlandish to think like, man, what a total jerk. What a fucking canoe. If he listens to what he listens to, he's true to what he listens to. But he's like, you know what, man? What I like is not what the masses like. I like playing music. I don't want to go get a day job at this fucking point. I just want to play fucking music and do this. Use my talent, my skill to play music. And if he comes up with a trendy fucking style, he's like, I think this is marketable, whether it be corn, slipknot, limp biscuit, fucking slipknot, or whatever, you know, Pantera, or whatever, the death core at the time, or whatever, whether it's 20 years ago, today, or whatever. So I'm going to play this kind of music. I don't even like this kind of music, but this is what sells. And I'm going to market this. Does that mean now King's a fucking poser? I don't think so. I, I Would I do that? To be honest with you, to be completely honest with you, if I was a musician and I was like, let's say, dedicating like my, my, my years and I was trying to tour, like let's say maybe like a toxic holocaust, right? You're going on the road the first five, eight years. And let's just say I was super underground. It's like, there's okay, there's, it's very obvious. There's no way I'm going to make a living off this. I might do for passion the underground stuff, but financially support it with the trendy shit. Fucking play on the side. Probably come up with a fucking gimmick name or something for the trendy shit, or vice versa. Uh, probably for the gimmick stuff. Maybe like maybe do a pull slip now where the costumes don't use my real name. 
to, to make the money, to pay the fucking bills. And it's like, well, look, I got, I can't get a job because I'm going to be on the road all the time touring. To be honest, like who, who maybe kind of did it has got like, not saying he doesn't like this stuff is what that, that Papa guy from a uh, fucking, uh, whatever the fuck his name is. Um, the guy from ghost, the singer from ghost, he did that repugnant album. That record's great, but not saying he doesn't like the ghost shit. That's like that. That's the trendy music that's sold. That's what pays the bills. Is it outlandish? If he's like, fuck, I prefer death metal. That's what I listen to. And I love want to do this death metal shit. He's like, but I can't tour and shit with that and, and have, you know, take time off work for a month or whatever. And pay the bills. So on the top of it, I'm going to do this fucking bigger project. That's going to sell. Not saying that's right. I'm not saying to do that, but I could definitely, I can understand it. And that might, cro- that, that could, would probably cross my mind too, if I was in that, those shoes. So, what I'm getting at, is it possible to corn guys and slipknot guys? People say, oh, dude, guys, they love slipknot. They like, talking about J-Dog, they're eating crow. They like DSI, they like lovely creation also. They might. That doesn't mean that the band that, that they're playing in, though, is fucking for real metal, though. It's pre-metal. It's that pre-deathcore shit. That's, to be honest, that's, it. to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, my history's a little hazy on that shit-ass fucking genre because I don't follow at all. Metalcore, deathcore, a.k.a. twinkcore, says he calls the dog. It originated with bands like Slipknot, Limp Biscuit, Cold Chamber. That's where it all fucking started. Shit of, but the shit of that nature. All the stuff I can't fucking stand. But that was what, that was what's popular. That's what's fucking sold. But is it possible the guys themselves are cool? Is it possible the guys themselves like real metal? Yeah, it's possible. Is it possible I would get along with them? Yeah, it is. Like I said, when I'm attacking these bands, it's not necessarily the guys themselves. Now, don't get me wrong. If I had to make an educated guess, like, <laughs> fucking whatever his name is from goddamn corn, what are the odds J-Dog and him going to have much in common and get along and shit like that? Again, it's possible, but if Vegas was taking bets, I'd be like, I probably have nothing to say to that complete fucking canoe. But I don't hate the guy by any means. I don't really, I don't know. I don't even know his fucking first name. Don't fucking care. Um, so just keep that in fucking mind. So maybe, maybe, maybe they were thinking about covering World Asia. Maybe he does like World Asia. Okay, that's a... That doesn't mean I now respect the band Corn. I think that's the most god-ass fucking awful shit of all fucking time. Total rap core fucking non-metal goddamn garbage. Doesn't stay my, change my stance on the actual music they play. But the guy that's himself listening to Real Model, good for him. I sure I am proud of him, you know. But he isn't, he didn't attribute to his goddamn own, own art, which is whatever. That's his prerogative, and, and I don't really fucking care. It doesn't mean I need to like his shitty-ass fucking band either now, does it? Comes with the church, you know what we do. But the college boss can answer in the morning. Later, goddammit.